Hi everyone, my name is Tambo and I'm a 3D designer at Clo. I'd like to share some tips and methods to ensure your garment project looks its best when preparing to render for presentation. Throughout this video, I'll walk you through ways to enhance the quality of your garments, layering them, and then rendering. Most of these methods can apply to any project files. Let's begin by refining and enhancing our garments first. To get started, I'm going to bond the shirt collar, collar stand, plackets, and cuffs, which will help give the pieces more structure. Apply additional thickness to thicken those parts. I'll set mine to 2.5. Once you do that, turn on both curveside geometry and double sided. Notice as I zoom into the collar here, you can better see the effect these settings have. Curveside geometry will round off the edges of the pattern pieces, while double sided gives the effect that two sides are sewn together. I'll apply those same changes to the rest of the bonded pattern pieces. Locate your collar and offset an internal line inside the bottom to ensure it retains a nice fold over effect. Change your fold angle from 180 to 280 in order for the collar to better retain its shape and simulate to update the changes. You can also unselect the fold rendering setting to smooth off the collar edges. Moving on to the pants, I'll apply those same changes as the shirt except I'll set my waistband thickness to 3 to make it slightly thicker. Apply seam tape along the crotch, seat, and pocket edges to help retain its structure. In addition to that, using the Edit Sewing tool, I'll select my sewing arrangements and change fold angles to 360, as this will allow the seams to lay nicer. Once I finish my edits, I'm going to change my avatar to the attention stance, as this is the most optimal way to check fit of a look. It's difficult to properly check the silhouette and wrinkles of a 3D garment while the avatar is in a T-pose. Now that I've finished enhancing my garment, I'm going to tuck the shirt into the pants. I'll do this by first selecting my shirt patterns and freezing the entire garment. This is to prevent any undesired collision while simulating. Next, I'll select my pant patterns and change the layer to 1 under the simulation properties. I'll activate simulation, however there still seems to be collision between my shirt and pant. Sometimes changing the layer back to zero can resolve collision. Give it a moment to allow the layering to work itself out. This seems to have worked out in this case. Now the pant lays still over the shirt while simulation is on. I'm going to unfreeze the shirt and apply simulation once more to see if we can achieve stable simulation. As you can see, there continues to be internal collision between the shirt buttons and the fly patterns. In these kind of scenarios, I'll try a combination of repositioning the pants and resetting the layer back to one until I achieve stable simulation. Layering collision could be caused by a number of things, such as the complexity of the patterns themselves, garment positioning, or the particle distance settings. I've also applied strength into the pants at this point to remove any sort of wrinkles as I manually adjust the fit with my cursor. Once I finish my layering, I'm going to revisit the shirt collar. Select the pattern in the 3D window and press F on your keyboard to zoom into the selected piece. I'm going to navigate the property editor and expand the miscellaneous settings. Here I'll change my mesh type from the default triangle to quad, as I've noticed the collar seems to drape better this way. Once I'm happy with the look, I can start to apply the finishing touches before rendering. At this stage, I begin making any edits or modifications to my outfit. I start by lengthening the hem of the pants, as I notice they lifted slightly during my layering process. Then, I apply an internal shape to my front patterns to extract a front pocket pattern to give the garment a bit more detail. After that, I start to style and apply my desired fabrics onto my garments. Thank you. 
Once I'm finished, I'll navigate the 3D toolbar to find the High Res Garment tool. Utilize this tool to improve overall drape quality of your 3D garments. When I select it, a window will pop up with various setting preferences. Selecting OK will automatically decrease a garment's particle distance, collision thickness, and decrease the skin offset, which I will explain more in depth shortly. There's also the simulation quality setting below that I'll explain as well. Let's start with particle distance. So what exactly is it? Fabric and clo are made up of mesh. The density of mesh affects the speed of simulation and the overall draping quality of a garment. The particle distance number is the measured length between each vertice of the mesh in millimeters. The default particle distance is set at 20, which is optimal for simulation speed while working within the 3D window. Generally, the recommended particle distance for finished renders should be 5, or even as low as 1 for very small pattern pieces, in order to avoid collision with other patterns. I'll typically adjust smaller pattern pieces while constructing a garment to improve the simulation stability. I'll change my view from the vertical toggle menu to mesh so you could better see the particle distance of each pattern. If I change the sleeve from 15 to 5, you could see the mesh scale change immediately. Also, while we're still in this view, you could better see the changes if I change the mesh to a quad mesh type. Next is collision thickness, which is the invisible buffer between fabric. This helps prevent garments or layered fabrics from colliding with each other. As I zoom in here, I'll try to find an example of this on the shirt. Notice here that the collar piece is slightly hovering over the front pattern. It's a little difficult to see as I must have set my setting to 1 prior from the usual default set at 2.5. However, as soon as I lower the collision thickness and simulate, you can see that the drape of the fabric will rearrange itself by layering closer to the other fabric. After, we have skin offset. Just like a fabric's collision thickness, skin offset pertains to the invisible buffer around an avatar. When I zoom into the cuff of the shirt, you can see that it is pretty much laying right on top of the skin at the setting of 0.5 from the default of 3. Finally is the simulation quality. So besides the default simulation tool, changing to complete nonlinear simulation will present the most accurate drape and realistic wrinkles of a garment. Keep in mind that you'll only want to use this type of simulation as a last step to prepare your garment for render, since these settings will slow down your overall simulation speed. I'll go ahead and hit OK and let simulation run. And if your garments hang slightly like mine, locate the low res garment tool to revert your settings back to a working state to make additional changes. Arrange any misaligned button simply by using your select move tool or gizmo. Once you're ready to render, select it from the top toolbar. On my screen, it's showing a preview image of my last render that I did prior. However, when you select render for the first time in a project file, you should see a gray window that says, click here to start the interactive render. Close internal render engine allows you to create photorealistic images or turntable videos of your 3D garments. You can position your render preview either in the render window or the 3D window. If you decide to make edits on your project, click this icon to stop the current preview. Then click the refresh icon to update your changes. Final Render initiates the rendering process and saves the file in the location specified in Image Properties. Current image will copy the image as it appears in the render window. Save current image will save the image as it appears in the render window. Click Show and Save Folder to open the folder where your render files have been saved. Find the image slash video properties icon next to it and click to expand its property editor. All settings can be found on the right hand side under the property editor. In image slash video, you have the option to render images or turntable videos. Select Render All Colorways if you've created other color variations in colorway mode. 
Specify image size by using Close Preset or create your own by selecting Custom. Adjust exposure and contrast under Image Adjustment. Under Background, click on the color chip to change the background color. Or select Transparency on to save the image with the transparent background. In Save, change your file name and specify the file path where you wish to save here. Next, select the Light Properties icon to view its settings in the Property Editor. Edit Light Intensity to brighten your image. Adjust Light Angle to change the direction of your lighting. Here you can import or save custom HDRI files. For those of you who aren't familiar yet, these are environment maps that emulate either indoor or outdoor lighting. Last, find render properties. Click here next to the engine to select your optimal render engine. If you are using a PC, ensure you choose the proper computer engine, whether it be your system's CPU or GPU for best performance. If you are unsure, try to test both CPU and GPU CUDA settings and use the faster render engine. Render time is indicated by the numbers next to the rendering image's progress bar. For Mac users, test both CPU and GPU OpenGL for fastest engine. Thank you all again for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more video content.